Um, my name is Bea, and as always, I would like to start by thanking Richmond Nature Park and also to acknowledge that Richmond, where I am located, is, um, is part of the traditional and unceded territory of the Coast Salish people. So we are guests in the territory of the indigenous peoples, and for this, we are very grateful. So today we are celebrating Fossil Day and just a few things for people that have never joined before. Um, this is our drawing view and you're gonna see the drawing process here. I am recording this and I'll share it with, this, uh, with you this video later. So don't worry if you miss something, you can rewatch it at a later time. Also, if you need to ask any questions, you can use the chat. And if you need me to slow down or to repeat something, please, 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 please tell me and I will adapt. Because <laughs> I'm so excited to share this uh, with you. I am ready to go on a journey. Are you ready to go on a journey? Well, let's go to a journey. So if you can see, we are traveling today right where I am pointing with my finger. We are at Yoho National Park, and today we're going to hike, tup, 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 and we're going to go there. Oh man, do we need permission to get there? Absolutely. This is a restricted area. This is a prohibited area where only uh, people with permission can go. So you are very lucky. We are going to walk from the city of Field, from the town of Field, and we're going to hike. Oh my gosh, look at the forest. What are we going to find? Whoa, we are at the top of the Burgess Shell. And look at all these rocks. I think, hmm, what is this rock here? Shall I grab that rock? Let's see. Huh. <gasps> I, got, I caught it rock. Let's see. I'm going to take this. We are still there up in the mountain. And I just caught this huge rock. Hmm. What's inside? I brought a hammer. Let's see what's inside. Whoa. What is this? Oh my goodness. Does anybody know what is the amazing thing that I just found on the Burgess shell? This is a trilobite and it's an extinct animal. We don't see them anymore. And it's been preserved on this rock and we are gonna draw it today. Isn't that amazing? So I am gonna put my trilobite here on the side so you can see it. And I have my sharpener, my eraser, my 2B graphite pencil, and then I have a blue pencil just to sketch. Exactly, you're all right, it's a bug. And it's called a uh, trilobite and it's a fossil. And it means that this is actual rock. The animal was covered by all these layers and millions of years after, we were so lucky that we found it. So he is very dead. But he's so happy that he ended in our class. <laughs> I know, isn't that amazing? So trilobites were very different in size. Some were very, very tiny and some were very, very big. And I'm gonna put it here and we are gonna draw it. So to start with, we're gonna draw an oval shape. I'm actually gonna put this here so you can see it exactly as I see it. Perfect. So we're going to start. It's so amazing, isn't it? I can see that. Hmm. Could this be the eyes? Yes, they are. So this must be the head and this must be the body. Whoa. And it's like, it looks like an armor. Isn't that amazing? What is the name of the book? We are going to draw today. Let's start with the title. <laughs> so what we are going to draw today is called a tra lo bite. And what that name means is an animal with a three part body. 
That's why this word means this part tree, tri is three. So trilobite. And they name it like this, trilobite, because it has a head, it has <clears throat> a thorax, a torso, and then a tiny, tiny, tiny tail. But it also has other three parts. Do you see that? It has one long part here, one long part here, and one long part here. That's why it's called trilobite. So this is amazing. I'm going to start with the blue, and I'm just going to make an oval. And an oval is like a circle, but a little bit, a little bit longer. And as you see, the head is going to be a little bit wider. And this is our, our, our trick, our magic pencil. No one is going to ever see that we sketch with the uh, blue pencil. So don't worry if you'd have to make a lot of lines. And as you can see, our oval is going to be a little bit pointy here at the end. So we made an oval and then we divided it to separate the area that is the head and then the rest of the body. And then we are also going to make these oval inside here to separate this part, this part, and this part. And that's very easy. We just need to make another oval, but in this case, it's more like a triangle, doesn't it? With like a pointy end here. And then the other two lines joining. It's like a tail within the body. Usually tails are here, right? But we are just making this shape here. And I'm going to go a little bit slowly so you can catch up. So we have our head and we have this three lobe body, which is what trilobite means. One on the side, one on the side, and one in the middle. If you notice, the head has two eyes, one on each side. And it's so interesting. If you look at it closer, I'm going to put it closer. The eye has, it's called compound eye, has a lot of tiny eyes inside. So I want to make sure I include that. So I'm going to make a circle for one eye and another circle for another eye. And I don't know you, but I don't know how to make two circles the same size. So sometimes I need to go over and over and over. Wow, it's looking very cute. <laughs> Let's try to continue. For the face, what we need to notice is that there is these little pieces that come on the sides. And we're going to do that later. But just, just for now, I am going to make a tiny, tiny triangle here and a tiny, tiny triangle here. And this is our blueprint. Remember, we're going to go later with our graphite pencil and we're going to make all these details. My favorite part is going to be to draw this. And it looks so complicated. How can we make it simple? Well, we're first going to separate the tail with another line. So we will worry about that later. But the body has 12 segments. I'm going to write that here, 12 segments. And how can we make sure that we divide these in like 12 equal, equal? Well. I don't know you, but I have a trick. If we divide this in half, now we would have only to have six and six, right? What if I divide it in half? Now I would have to have three and three. Oh, I can totally do that. So let's go again. We divide it first in half and then each half in its own half. And now all I need to do is two lines. What? Is that true? Do I have six segments? One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's true. I was super easy. Let's try to do that here. Okay, let's do it together. So we have to have six segments. 
So I'm going to divide it in half. And now each of these parts, I'm going to do two lines, one and two. And then here, one and two. Whoa, we just divided in 12 equal parts. And if you want me to do it again, I'm super happy to do it again here. So while you catch up, I'm going to do the exact same drawing here. And we're going to repeat it together because I know some things I, I do a little bit fast. So the first thing, this was the tail. The first thing was to divide the whole thing in half. And now we have that we need six segments here and six segments here. So if I divide it in half, now all I need three segments here and three segments here because six plus six, uh, three plus three is six. So all I need to do is two lines on each. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And it's the same here. I divide it in half and put two lines on each. And now I have my 12 segment body. Yeah, uh, 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 if you need me to do it again, I'll do it as many, many, many times as, as needed. I can even do it in graphite. So we do it together again. Thank you for asking. So it is 12 segments. And if I divide 12 in two, is six, right? Six plus six is 12. And if I divide six in two pieces, that is three and three. So all we need to do is divide these. And suddenly we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we do the exact same thing here. And we suddenly have a body of 12 segments. And the reason why this is so important is because now we just need to make the line longer to touch both sides of the body. And these lines, when they are going like this, are called parallel because they never meet. They walk side by side, but they never meet. And I noticed that these lines, maybe they start going into an angle. So maybe when you're around here, we can start curving the lines a little bit, but they never, never meet. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, please let me know in the chat. Eh? I'll try to always go slow, but it's wonderful that you tell me, because again, I love fossils and we found an amazing fossil. <laughs> So this is a very, 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 um, it's a very sketch. It's a very, very sketch of our drone. So no one will see it, but we're using it. So as a blueprint, our, our X-ray vision drone. So once we have this body, if you notice the tail has some like, yeah, it has some of these segments too, but they're a little bit more separated. So if you notice, there's a gap here. So I'm just going to, for later, I'll totally go later. I'm going to go later with my uh, graphite pencil. But for now, this is what I'm going to draw. Like tiny, tiny tails that come at the very, very end. And while you catch up, I'm going to add some awesome details. Uh, I'm going to write down that these, this part here, that is the head. And the head is also called the cephalon. I know it's such a cool word, eh? Cephalon. And this part here where the segments are is called the thorax. We have thorax too, and we have a head too. And then this tiny, tiny part at the end, that has a very awesome name that I just learned this morning, is P or Pygidium, which means tail. 
and I'm gonna try to write it as clear as I can. I've never seen that word before and I like it. I think if I have a dog, I'm gonna call him Pygidium. Hey, Pygidium, come. So head, thorax and tail. The last thing I wanna do is to divide the head because you notice how awesome this looks. It's like, it's like I don't know, it looks like um, armor, like he has a helmet. And to do this, it's going to be as simple as drawing a line that joins this point here with a point here. And I'm going to do it like this. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing from here until here. And I'm leaving a little bit of room between the eye and the center. And then I have here, it's so cool. It's like, it's like chocolate. When you open a chocolate uh, and, and you see all the little pieces. So I'm just gonna make a line. I'm just gonna make another line. So maybe one, two, and three. And then I'm gonna divide them in half. And I'm gonna let you, I cannot see the word. Oh my goodness, uh, which word? I'm gonna put it a little bit center here. There we go. So the head is called the cephalon, and this part in the middle is called the thorax, and this tail here, pygidium, uh, the tail. Need more time? Absolutely. Let's do this together again. So we started with a very big oval, very big oval, and we divided it in half, approximately here. Then we added the big eyes on each side so he can see because he this is the head so he's going to move that way. Then we added a little bit of a triangle here and a little bit of a triangle here. And I think the most interesting part was happening here at the thorax because we had this very long long, long structure that we divided in 12. And it's super cool because even if you don't have 12, it's okay. As long as you have lines crossing it, that'll be fine. And then we added a little bit of tail. It looks like a shrimp's tail, actually. And that's what we did. And then we divided the kind of helmet head with two lines here. And then two lines here and one line here. And so far, it looks more like a spaceship. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this. I'm not going to put my hand on top so you can follow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my uh, graphite pencil and I'm going to start giving a little bit of detail. And all I'm going to do is, uh, for example, on the eye, I'm going to make tiny eyes inside. And guess why? Because the trilobite, this fossil, was the first animal, the very first that had very, very similar eyes to us, even though it's like how many millions of years? 500 millions of years ago. That's a long time ago. But he had what we call compound or complex eyes that were formed with, they had lenses like us. They were not just, yeah, these were, they were looking for things to eat. So they needed to see very well. There we go. And they lived in the water. So we can later draw some, some <laughs> we can actually draw some bubbles because he's underwater. Um, so this is the eye. And then one thing that I really, really, really like, oh, thank you, that's awesome. I'm glad you were able to catch up. One thing I like about this is that if you notice, every, every single piece is like a very, very smooth, um, uh, it's not a straight line, it's all very curvy. So let's let's do all these lines, shall we? With the graphite, suddenly 
we start seeing only the graphite pencil. So we no longer see the blue. And one thing I want to make sure is that now I can go and draw this little, do you see that? It's amazing. I know that that structure has a name and it continues through here. So this little thing that comes on the sides, and I'm gonna do the same thing here, comes from here and then here. Wow, this trilobite is so lucky that he's our model for today. I'm sure he's very happy wherever he is. So that little piece has a very, very <laughs> interesting name. It's called Gino with an N, spine. And there's so many different, is it the first animal to have eyes like humans? That I am not sure because animals had eyes, but humans and trilobites have in common that they have, they both have complex eyes. So an eye that is complex means that it's able to, it has lenses inside. So it's not just, um, it's not just, uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a more complicated, it, it, it means that it's more evolved. But I'm not sure if it's the very, very, very uh, first one uh, to have eyes like humans. I, I, I know that it's the first animal to have complex eyes. But thank you, thank you for that. Actually, you know what? I don't know all the answers. I, I sometimes have to, uh, more, more often than ever, uh, I like to, to learn as well. So I'll definitely look into that for sure. Thank you for asking. One thing I also want to do is to put these lines here. And have you noticed how the top of this line is a little bit curvy? So uh, I want to do that. I want to do that top line a little bit curvy but the other ones are the same. Oh, I, I think I would love later to give him a name or her. I have no idea. One thing I really, really like that I read about this is that, um, I don't know if you know what a roly-poly is, but there's some bugs, the wood bugs that we see. If you lift a plant in the garden, if you lift a plant pot, you see all these, this little, little, animals that they roll and they look like this and they roll, 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 roll. And sometimes you see the little antenna coming out. Well, guess what? Trilobites could roll too for protection. Imagine that there's another animal in the, in the, in the water that wants to eat him. So he curled himself into this ball like a, like a roly poly and also also for protection, um, they some had spines, some had uh, like here, so no predator would actually eat it uh, because they were actually on the bottom of the water. So yeah, you would get protection on top, so nothing can eat you. So these things are also for protection. All these spines. Oh. Yeah, the triangle is the genome spine. That is absolutely right. And also, is it gray? Guess what? Because the trilobites that we see today are um, fossilized, which means that they have become rock, the color that we see them, it's, it depends on the color of the rock. Uh, so scientists, I was, I was researching, like, what can I, how can I color the trilobite? And apparently, they were multicolored. So that's gonna help us uh, with, our, with our drawing because you can color it the color you would love. Uh, so yeah, it depends on the rock they were. Um, this one here was on this rock and uh, is this color, uh, but there are other ones that if the rock was a different material, it would be that material. So those are super awesome questions. Uh, let's do the body, shall we? Ooh. I, I, this is my favorite part of the trilobite. And I'm just gonna go and curve all these lines one by one. Do you see what I'm doing? I am curving all these lines a little bit. 
And because we have our blueprint underneath, we can follow it as a guide. And I, <laughs> I also was reading about trilobites that they could also eat tinier animals. So they can be eaten and they can eat. And uh, some even eat, ate like um, whales, they, whales filter, they, they filter water. So there are a lot of tiny, tiny creatures in the water and the whales, um, they drink all that water and they'll filter all the tiny animals in it. And apparently trilobites did that too. So that's super interesting. How much circles does it have on its eyes? That's such a good question. You can have as many as you want. Seriously, I found photos that had so many in it. Uh, so I don't have a number, but let me tell you, it's called comp compound eye. I'm gonna write it here because it's a, it's a good word. Compound eye, which means that it's formed of many, 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 many eyes. So as many as you want. And that is really cool. Imagine if we had all those eyes. Because I guess, you know, if you're tiny and you're at the bottom of the, of the water, you just want to make sure you see what's going on around you. Oh, and also they mold. Yes, no, 500 years, no. 500 million, millions of years ago. So yeah, this, this was very, very long time ago. And that period, I'm gonna write it here because those, those things are cool. So 500 million of years ago, we call um, that, that, um, that, uh, that period is called the Cambrian. And the Cambrian period is where uh, all these incredible, incredible fossils that we see today lived. And you know, some, um, some bugs uh, actually that we see today, they are distant cousins of the trilobite. Uh, so that's, that's called the Cambrian period. And you, if you like dinosaurs, you might've heard the word, the expression Cambrian explosion. And during the Cambrian, all these different life forms came to be on earth. And that's what they call it, the Cambrian explosion. All these new animals, all these new creatures. Oh, wow, we have an amazing suggestion. Thank you so much for how can we name this trilobite. So I'm going to thank you for that. Hi, my name is Trilomax. Thank you for that. <laughs> that's really cool. So now I'm gonna uh, uh, add a little bit of detail here. And remember that these ones are separated, the ones that are part of the pygidium or tail. Yeah, this is super cool. And you know what? They had tiny, tiny legs, but because they're on the other side, we cannot see it. So guess what? These trilobite also molded. So all these that we're seeing here is a shell, like a crab. So when they became too small for them, they leave it behind and they make another one. So actually what we mostly find in the Berger shell is the, the actual um, exoskeleton. And that's what this is called. I'm going to write it here because it's also an awesome word. Exoskeleton, which means the skeleton outside. We humans have uh, a skeleton, but it's inside. I have a skeleton inside my, my fingers and my hand and my arm, but this animal has a skeleton outside. So that's super, super, super cool. Uh, also, um, another thing that I really, really would like to, to put here is the size, because the smallest one and I have a ruler here. The smallest one was uh, one millimeter. And one millimeter is that. Oh my gosh. 
but it's so tiny. And the biggest one, the largest one, was 70 centimeters. So this ruler is 30. <laughs> so imagine how big a, a, a 70 uh, centimeter trilobite can be. So that's really cool. So I really, 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 um, I'm very happy with how the trilobite is going it because he's walking, he's leaving a little bit of a trail. I'm gonna do some lines here because he's moving. And you know that I like always to add uh, two C's to, in, uh, to, um, to make it move. You see, it just add two lines like that and it looks like it's moving. And now I'm gonna have fun with my colors because I, as I said, like I'm gonna go crazy because I like this color green and I like these. And <laughs> I think I'm gonna paint my trilobite with those two, with those three colors. And you can color your trilobite as you please. Because after all, he's an extinct animal and we don't know exactly, we don't have photos. Who was gonna take a photo of the trilobite so long ago? Unless we invent time travel. Can you imagine going there and seeing all these animals 500 million of years ago? One thing I'm gonna do is hold the pencil like this so I can add a little bit of shadow on the sides. And if you have other types of colors, like crayons, that would be super too. So this is your trilobite and you can color it as you wish. Oh, I think the head, yeah, I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna color the whole head like this. So as we said, the trilobites could either be eaten <laughs> or they could be predators. It depends on the size, right? If you see a tiny, tiny, tiny animal and the trilobite is hungry, he'll get that. There we go. And they live, as I said, at the, at the bottom because the earth was different back then. It was mostly covered by water. So most of the animals of this period, the Cambrian period, most of them were in the water. Do you see what I'm doing? I am adding a little bit of dark on the edges. And that adds a little bit of volume because if I touch it, it has a lot of texture. And I have a special surprise, a special surprise for you. Because at UBC, at the University of British Columbia, there's a very cool museum is the Pacific Museum of Earth. And they have fossils and they have awesome people. And guess what the scientist working there, what did he let me borrow? Are you ready? This is incredible. This is a real trilobite. And it's much, much smaller than the one that we found ourselves. Look how tiny, let's measure it. It is two centimeters tall, at uh, two centimeters long and 1.5 centimeters wide. And I'm gonna put it closer to the camera. It looks exactly like the one we just drew. And I can believe that this is so old. Isn't that cool? Yeah, so they have an amazing, I'm going to leave it here so he's our friend. They have an amazing collection of uh, fossils. And you can go there and see all these, uh, yeah, they're in rocks, right? And it's really cool. So if you, if you can, uh, yeah, I, I, I encourage you because it's really cool. And I'm gonna color my segments <laughs> uh, with this color, why not? But I'm gonna make sure that on the edges, I go a little bit darker. 
And guess what? I'm going to tell you something super cool. Um, so animals, even back then, right, when they eat, guess what they also do? Well, like animals today, they poop. <laughs> so guess what we can find today? We can find all that poop as a rock. We can see the poop of the dinosaurs. We can see the poop of the trilobites. And do you know what that is called? Because it has a cool name. Well, I'm gonna let you know because it's very cool. So dinosaur poop is called coprolite, which literally means a rock of poop. <laughs> So I, I found that very cool. I'm actually going to draw a tiny poop. Because, yeah, they were animals like, like dogs today. So I guess they didn't have anyone to pick it after them. So they, yeah, they just walk around, poop, poop, poop. And then we found it many, 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 many million years later. That's super cool. So I, I really, I can wait to see the colors of your trilobites because I'm sure someone is using purple. Oh yes, I should have used purple. Once you have the colors, uh, I'm gonna show you a trick. Do you see how this lobe and this lobe, you can see them differently, right? There's like a shadow there and there's like a shadow there. So if we just make a little bit of dark with the same color, oh, wow. Now I can almost touch it. Wow, now I can see the three parts very, very separated. I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna add a little bit of darker color, whatever color you use on each side. And that way, it's going to look like the trilobite that we found. Wow, this is cool. So now our trilobite that we named, thanks to, thanks to one of our amazing attendees, Trilomax, has a beautiful color and also a middle lobe and two lobes on each side. This is so cool. I think I'm going to color the eyes of my trilobite. You know what? I'm going to go purple. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go purple, but very lightly. And you know, you can have also tons of fun with the title, for example. I'm going to use all the colors I use for my trilobite for my title. And if you notice, I'm just coloring only a piece at the bottom and very lightly at the top. And that's because I wanted to make it look like the ones here, like it has a lot of volume. And that's why we don't just color things flat. Oh, wow. Actually, <laughs> gosh, it reminds me of Baby Yoda. <laughs> I don't know why I color it like this, but he looks like Baby Yoda. Oh, well, I'm sure that if you color it, depending on the colors that you use, uh, <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> so I think for detail, I'm going to use this yellow. Oh, this is nice. And I know we have uh, like 10 minutes. I know it was a lot, but I also know this was a lot of fun. So guess what? For the next session, I also have a surprise. So I'm going to put the link uh, before we, we finish this. Don't worry about it now. But I'll put the link in case you didn't sign up. If you want to join the next session, uh, please do. Uh, and I'll put the link. But don't worry about it now. I'd rather ask coloring together. Whoa. This is cool. <laughs> I also think because he's at the bottom of the ocean, I think I'm going to use a brown. Just 
it was like this a trailer about a baby <laughs> yeah i was like <laughs> i know right it looks so much like baby yoda i did not do that intentionally <laughs> so i'm just gonna add a little bit of brown because he's at the bottom of the um ocean and he's walking around crawling bloop, 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 hoping not to get eaten And hoping to find something to eat. Let's see, I'm gonna make the little, he's leaving a little bit of a trace because he's walking like bloop, 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 bloop. So he, he's leaving some footprints. There we go. And, and we cannot see his mouth because that's underneath. There we go. Whoa, that's cool. So I'm going to use also the same colors to add a little bit of color to my title. Gosh, it looks so like Baby Yoda. <laughs> totally unintentional. Wow. And it's cool because, you know, um, during that time, uh, 500 million years ago, like it was so different from today. So different. Everything looks so different. And you might be thinking, like, why can we find trilobites today? Like, why didn't they survive? And that's because there was a big uh, change in the environment. And most of this, it's most of the species actually that that live at that time um, became extinct. They didn't have enough time to to adapt. So I'm going to use blue too here. So that's why we no longer see some of the yeah, we don't we don't see dinosaurs and we don't see um, yeah we, we don't see uh and T-Rexes because not all animals were able to adapt to the changes in the environment. So all we have is the fossils that they left behind. In this case, the actual trilobite or their poop. <laughs> and I'm gonna color it this. But I like I like I like learning new words because yeah, they're so different. Well, this is they died because an asteroid. So exactly. So there was the changes in the environment were motivated by um, a raise in temperature. And it's believed that, um, yeah, asteroids hitting the Earth, they increase the temperature a lot. And, and animals didn't have time uh, to, to adapt to that. That is so cool that you know that. I love learning about, about, about these things too. Wow. So I'm going to go with graphite a little bit on top. Because sometimes after you color, you lose a little bit of the lines. But, um, but I think, I think I'm happy with, with Trilomax. He's behaved very nicely. I'm very glad that you joined me in this Burgess, Burgess Shale expedition at Yoho National Park. Wow, we did so much work. We need to hike down the mountain now because we cannot take this fossil. We need to leave it there. Uh, yeah, so we need to leave the fossil there and hike down and maybe have an ice cream at field because it's been such a long, long journey to go up, up the hill. We went, we went, uh, I'm going to put it here, what we did today. We hiked and now we need to go downhill again. And we need to leave the restricted area. And then when we hike down, we can now say, I was there, I found a trilobite, and I sketched it. So yeah.